I just do want to give you some summary of some of the uh, the newer tools that are available in, in sheet metal. You know, of course, the, you know, the latest version that's out here is, is NX12, and we're going to take a look at some of those details. But here's a summary of what was new and introduced in NX10 and NX11. You know, some of the big changes were you know, really the, uh, uh, you know, Siemens downgraded some of the tools and, and made them available to more and more people. So like the, this bridge bend used to be part of advanced uh, sheet metal, was brought back down into the standard sheet metal as part of NX10. And then... Uh, you know, in NX11, they took the aerospace tools and brought them down into the advanced uh, sheet metal uh, functions as well, uh, trying to make it a little little more available to, to most people. So for NX12, there's some, some neat stuff that uh, you might see. If you work with sheet metal every day, you're, you're probably familiar with some, uh, some of the uh, maybe current limitations of things that you can do. Like when you create a flange, you can only create one flange at a time. You know, now you can do sets of flanges, so I'm going to show you that too. You know, tabs you can create as multiple profiles and you can also create um, what's called the multi-bend tabs like the, the lower hand, right hand um, illustration so i'm going to wrap this up with uh, some uh, uh, review of some of the enhancements that you might see in nx12 and, and show you what they look like so um, one of the things that you'll see in nx12 is the ability to uh, review your part you review your design there's some things called visual reports that are part of the hd 3d functions um, and, and those HD 3D functions are, are really easy to overlook. Uh, so I'm, I'll show you where they are. Um, but what you can do is, you know, there's there's some built-in checks that will let you highlight faces on the model so that you can uh, easily identify plain old flanges versus punch features versus, um, uh, you know, webs and things on, on the sheet metal part. And, and it'll, it'll actually help you check that, you know, make sure you've got everything done properly versus... Uh, uh, you know, maybe you put the wrong bend radius in somewhere, the wrong bend angle. So um, let me show you what that looks like. I've got a couple things to show, but for the sake of time, I think I'm just going to show you a live one here and give you an idea what it does. Let's see. So let me go to this part here. So here's a here's a fairly uh, it looks complex, but this is really a, it's just a, a busy part. Got a lot of different um, bends and tabs and things on it. <clears throat> so. If you've never worked with HD 3D, it's over here in the resource bar. And it's got a variety of different things here that most people tend to overlook because they're they're really more for checking your models versus actually building them. So a lot of people just kind of get their work done and go on their way. But there's a lot of neat stuff over here. Let me go into the visual reporting. And in visual reporting, if you never used this before, it allows you to select from a whole bunch of different built-in checks. And we don't have time to go through these. Maybe we'll do this in another uh, in the, another webinar. But the new stuff that's in 12 is uh, really based on the sheet metal sheet metal function. So let me show you what this might look like. So I'm going to do a report on the sheet metal bend radius, and I'll activate this. So it's going to highlight all the different bends on the part. Hopefully you can see that on the screen. And it's going to color code them and group them in terms of size. So it looks like I've got, I got here, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different bend radius is on this part <laughs> and if you look at it it's it knows inside versus outside so it's it's smart enough to go through and, and take a look at the inside bend radius values it's not confusing inside versus outside and it's highlighting them all and showing you where they all are so I got a you know 0.3 0.4 0 0.5 and so on so that can be really helpful there's another tool in here for um, bend angle I'll run this one real quick and we'll just have it go through the analysis. So it's still gonna highlight the bends, but it's gonna tell you the angle of the adjacent flange at each bend. So in this case, it looks like I've got four different bend angles. You know, these are uh, 50 degree angles that I highlighted there. And, and you can browse through this list. If I click the next one there, that's, uh, looks like I've got four faces over here. You see the blue ones over here. These are uh, 55 degree angles. I've got 75 degree angles and I've got 90s. So it's a really handy way to, especially if you've got a really, uh, I'll call it a busy part, or you know, some people might think of this as a complex part. Um, you know, really, really good way to to validate what what you've done in your design to make sure that uh, you know you've got uh, things things uh, uh, designed the way that you want. So that's the visual report. Let me go back over here and talk about some other ones. Um, I'm kind of running over time here, so I'm going to kind of quickly run through some of these things. So in flat patterns. Um, they've made some enhancements so that when you generate a flat pattern, you can actually resequence 
the bends. So if you uh, go through the process of uh, you know generating the callouts, you might remember that there's some bend sequences. They, there's little ID numbers so that there's a it's supposed to represent the sequence in which the bends are going to be formed. So now there's a bend list that you get. So it's a table format, and you can reorder the bends that represent are represented in the bend list, and then it, it will uh, update the sequences that you'll see there. So it's helpful for manufacturing planning, or uh, maybe just design validation. So I'm going to skip that demo because I think there's some really other really interesting things that we can talk about here in the last couple minutes. <clears throat> so we've got uh, flange and tab enhancements, and I'll show you both of these kind of back to back. So with flanges, um, you know, before it was, uh, you know, one flange at a time. Create a flange, add to the part, create another flange, add to the part. Uh, now with NX12, you can create multiple flanges at the same time. So you can select multiple edges. They don't even have to be contiguous edges. Uh, like in this example here, we've got three different edges that are selected. Um, but you can also select multiple sets of edges and assign different parameters to different sets. So I think that's that's pretty neat. Um, I think it'll save uh, quite a bit of time. So let me show you that real quick. And let's go over here and, um, whoops, this one here. Okay, so, so here we've got a, a part, and uh, this is just standard sheet metal. Go in and just select uh, some of these edges here. And uh, right away there, you can see you can select uh, multiple edges, and they, they could even go in opposite directions. So I got two of uh, flanges going up, one flange going down. They all share the same parameters. And then if you click Add New Set, just like you would with blends, um, you can select um, different edges and then make those uh, uh, parameters different and you can edit those all in one feature. So what, what we have highlighted there is one single feature. Um, so another enhancement that they've made is to be able to capture design intent on um, on the flange that you create. And then if you do any kind of associative um, copying, like a mirror function, it remembers the design intent. So what we've done here is we've put a flange in the middle. This is just a standard flange with, uh, with some bend reliefs on the uh, center of the edge on the right, this little notch cut out. We want to mirror that to the left-hand side. Um, and you can see you have an option there so that you can select to maintain the center, um, the center uh, design intent. So it'll stay in the center like this right here. It's on the center of the part because the edge on the left is longer than the edge on the right. Or you can go in and uh, as an option, change that definition and you can see here you can just tell NX just straight mirror and, and that part uh, that, that part will have the flange um, directly opposite through the mid plane so if you do a, a, a regular mirror you get a, a, an operation looks like this okay so that's one of the things I wanted to show you um, another neat enhancement that, that I do want to make sure I get across before we uh, finish up today Let's see, here we go, <clears throat> is the tab. Um, tab has always been kind of a boring thing. People say, okay, well, let's just create one tab, start with that as a base and build flanges and all kinds of other fancy stuff on top of that tab. Um, but nowadays with the tab, you've got multiple profiles that you can work with. So you don't have to create a tab and then follow that up with a bunch of cutouts or extrudes. And then uh, you can also create um, brackets that in actually include what looks like flanges. You know, These are called multi-bend tabs. So if you do this in the context of an assembly, kind of like what we did at the very first uh, part of the uh, presentation here, then uh, you can actually create um, interfaces to adjacent parts and have flange geometry. And, you know, these are going to be formable, formable flanges um, built into the same you know single feature that that represents that tab. So let's take a look at that real quick here. Let's see. Here we go. Okay, so here's the the, the multi-profile part of the uh, the tab enhancement. So you can see here we've got a bunch of intersecting profiles, and then uh, you know based on how you want to select things, you know you can you can use region boundary curves, which is what we're doing here. So uh, you know wherever wherever you've got a closed area, you know NX will find that like this here. You know these are all closed volumes. <clears throat> And you can build up your tab, and then, like I showed you before, you don't have to have you know closed geometry. So this uh, this tab that we'll create on the left hand side, it's got uh, overlapping curves. So of course, Annex is smart enough to trim those back. You know the examples I gave you earlier, 
the the uh, lines were short, and NX extended those. So uh, you know, intersecting profiles are are no problem. You don't have to waste a lot of time cleaning up those profiles. It'll go ahead and uh, understand what the intersections are, either trim trim the curves back internally or project them internally. <clears throat> so here's the multi-bend tab. And uh, in this case, we can choose references relative to the um, uh, other parts in the assembly. So you can select some faces, and those faces can have holes on them like you see here. <clears throat> so what NX will actually do, uh, it's going to treat those somewhat as, um, uh, as flanges. So you can have bend parameters for those. Like in this case, on the one on the right, we're going to change the uh, the bend radius. We'll put a different bend radius on the, on that um, side. And then we're going to go ahead and define the uh, the actual tab itself. So NX is going to lay this out. Uh, so let's let me take a look here. Um, we've got these uh, the the two faces on those blocks. It's already laid out somewhat as in a flat. You can see that where the bend lines are going to be. Um, and the one up there on top is a different size as the one on the right. That's why the spacing is different. So for the tab itself, um, just like we had in the earlier example, you can sketch on top of the existing geometry. So we can create a tab that goes all around those blocks and also uh, aligns with the, uh, the, the circular ring in the middle. So we'll put a circle there and we'll include holes. So we're just actually taking curves uh, from... Uh, geometry on the adjacent parts and, and adding those by using the project curve in the sketch. And then we needed to you know, trim, trim off some parts here. <clears throat> so define our close shape that defines the tab and uh, it's done. So it, it creates that shape. You know, this offset over here was added as a part. This is on the right hand side where I'm pointing. Um, that was added as a parameter within that, within that tab. So of course this is associative. Um, if you change the angle of that tab, it's going to go uh, of the block. It's going to change the uh, the angle on that tab, as you can see there. So that's that's a really neat enhancement that uh, that they've they've put into NX12. All right. So um, I think I've gone a little bit uh, over time, so I apologize for that, and I appreciate uh, your time for everybody who stayed with me here. So I've got a little bit of a summary. Um, I think uh, you know if you're familiar with uh, with NX sheet metal or or or, or have uh, you know look, looked into it. Hopefully you understand uh, all the different tools that you have available to you. It's in two different uh, packages, as I'll talk about in just a moment. But you've got all kinds of different sheet metal specific tools that you can use. Um, and you can also, I didn't talk too much about it, but you can also um, uh, convert existing uh, uh, NX models or imported models from a standard model to a sheet metal model. That's what this was talked about here, sheet metal from a solid model. <clears throat> So to wrap things up here, um, these are the uh, the modules that that I showed you today. Uh, so hopefully, you know, if you're interested in using any of these, you can take a look at what licenses you have available or what what licenses uh, to look forward to. The standard sheet metal package is the first one. That's the NX sheet metal. It's the uh, you know, product number is UG11430, and uh, fortunately, that's included in a lot of different modules. Um, so uh, if you've got the mock advantage, mock design, um, any of the mock uh, one, two, or three CAD bundles, even some of the CAM bundles that have um, CAD tools in them will have the sheet metal tools. So you've got all the standard functions I was showing you for tabs and flanges and all the punch features, um, the uh, unbending, the flat solid, flat patterns, all that stuff is in the standard sheet metal package. The advanced sheet metal package is what I showed you with the advanced flange, the joggle, the lightning cutout. That's an add-on. So if you think you might um, want to take advantage of those, uh, that's the NX30111 uh, package. And uh, it's it's for most people, it's going to be an add-on. You know, if, if you're lucky enough to have a Mach 3 progressive die package, there is a Mach 3 CAD bundle that, that's mainly for progressive die design. And, and there's some automotive uh, supplier bundles that, that have this package included with it. But for, I think for most people, it's probably going to be an add-on. And then the other tool that's a separate uh, item within NX licenses is the formability analysis. And, and that's the NX30620. Um, that's the one I showed you that does the finite element analysis on, on, on pretty much on any part. And uh, it, it generates the flat pattern as well as shows you the stresses and uh, you know material thinning, um, changes in the material thickness in, in, as a result of the analysis. 